And we're on. Ooh, look at me. Turn that down. <laughs> there you go, there's some people. Hello, hello. Please say hello, smash the heart button or something that I know you're here and you can hear me, see me, feel the vibes, all that stuff. Hello, Chandra. Is that how you say? I'm putting a bit of an accent in there. Chandra sounds like flows better than Chandra. <laughs> and I've got auto captions on. And that looks really cool. I'm, I hope that doesn't distract me. I'm just seeing how it works. On my phone, I can see the auto captions. Awesome. Technology is so clever. Hello. Oh, your name's tricky too. Eshani? Did I say that right? Everyone says my name wrong. Some people get it right first go. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Trevor. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm coming live to you from the Spirit Readings Group and Spiritual Events Directory, which are connected together but I'm cross posting to two pages so I have my phone and I have um, the my MacBook open as well so I can see comments on both so let's give it a second to see if some more people tune in before I start jabbering away I've got some new people on today I think so welcome welcome if you haven't um, tuned in or jumped on live with me before I will be doing some readings but more towards the second half or the end um, First we have a chat. The whole point of my um, lives is to teach you something. So it's called Optimistic Psychic Development and I love being able to teach and share my knowledge and channeled energy and the things that I've learned over the years with you to help you on your journey. So yeah, my name is Xavier. Optimistic Xavier is my business name. I'm a psychic medium, spiritual mentor and intuitive coach. So I have a lot of tools in my kit, do lots of different things. I'm looking very purple today. It's actually freezing in my house because <laughs> our heater died and we're moving on Friday. So it's a bit crazy and chaotic um, packing and stuff at the moment. And of course, the heater's dying on our way out of the house. That's so a beautiful sign that we're doing the right thing, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> um, hello, Ashley and Sarah, Janita. Awesome. Um, yeah, so just yeah obviously we're meant to just get out of here so excited to have a place with ducted heating instead of one of those um, reverse cycle things on the wall <laughs> very grateful to be moving house hey jody how are we <laughs> um yeah so i got my purple jacket on to keep warm so i don't go i don't shiver or chatter my teeth when i'm talking to you <laughs> very grateful to have a roof over my head is better than being out in the oh there's more people there i have to scroll hello nicole christy lee and sue are you going to ask me for moves not yet friday's move day so yeah it's like half like half empty the house there's no kids this week they've all gone back to their other parents so that's good timing of course of course universe so we can pack more stuff <laughs> and just work out what we need for ourselves in those few days who's moved out who enjoys moving house does anyone enjoy moving house or yeah who has moved like i moved growing up multiple times i'm in melbourne that's why i'm freezing my butt off right now trevor where are you <laughs> um i've moved house uh 27 times as a child like was we always rented and we're renting at the moment in this house me and my fiance but we are going to build next year so that's very exciting and the owners wanted to want to move in so we have to move before we start building the house but that's okay we're upgrading to more space for all the kitties the cayman islands i am jealous that sounds amazing <laughs> beautiful weather there i'm sure unless it's like do you get like cyclone season like fiji for example i don't know Yes, it is good to clean out and fresh start. Exactly. I'm packing and cleaning things and clearing out things and donating and we're going to hire a skip and it's just a great refresher. And then we'll get rid of a lot of our crap ready for when we build the house and then get nicer furniture and everything. So it's a beautiful process. I'm so excited and someone's trying to call me. Sorry, I'm doing a live. <laughs> so yeah, it's just fun. I'm just hoping nothing breaks. So yeah, just wrapping it up and 
protecting it and all that fun stuff. Try not to make the boxes too heavy. <laughs> That's what the removalists are for. On the Gold Coast. Oh, lucky ducks. That's awesome. Well, today's theme, lovelies, is... And I usually... Hey, Ben! <laughs> I mean, howdy! <laughs> um, today's theme, I just tuned in 15 minutes before we started and said, what are we talking about today? Sometimes I know earlier and other times I find out last minute. Um, yeah, and I had been distracted because of all the things going on. So I left it to the last minute and said, what are we talking about? And they said forgiveness, which I thought was interesting. Forgiveness is interesting. And actually it came up. I, I hosted or helped host a spiritual circle last night. Um, and the theme came up for one lovely lady. She said she finds it very hard to forgive and explain to her, which I'll explain to you guys, that um, forgiveness is not for the other person it's for yourself because it's such a weight off your shoulders and it's so good for you and changes your energy raises your vibration and she said yes i've heard that so many times but this head of mine just doesn't want to do it so that she's not ready to do that and that's okay although it, it, and with all the love in the world i say this some people aren't ready to not be a victim anymore because saying you forgive someone you don't have to say it to their face you just do it you just say it out loud or to yourself that you forgive them or write a letter to them that you burn or rip up into a thousand pieces you don't actually have to let them know you forgave them to if you don't want to give them the satisfaction of that if that's the energy you're feeling um it's really just for you it's a release it's it's to let go to you're choosing to be happy and you're choosing to not let things from the past weigh you down or be an excuse or a a reason for things going wrong in your life you're ready to move on and and just be happy and yeah released of anything holding you back it's a really beautiful vibe and I, it's a saying i'm pretty sure it's a quote that forgiving someone the forgiving something you haven't had an apology for is one of the hardest things to do and it is and that's why it's recommended to do because it is a challenge it is a lesson and I'm hoping as I'm speaking about this that some of you are all thinking of people or actions that you would like to forgive or that you're having a hard time letting go of. There's always something if you think back to your past and things you've been happy with and not happy with. Um, yeah, is there something that you, or someone that you're still angry at, like if you bumped into them, you still kind of think, oh, it'd be like they did this or they said this to me or... Yeah, some people are just... And then with, with no forgiveness comes distrust and so many things attached to it. I know this woman, for example, she would be much happier if she could just let go because if because she's so angry at this person all the time. That's just resonating through all her life and then it's blocking good things from coming because she's always sinking these ill thoughts towards that person. If you let go of the judgment which is holding you in victim, then you can forgive yourself or others exactly. And that's why I wrote, oh, and the struggle and the opposite of not forgiving. I was told it was just as unhealthy and not being able to forgive. The opposite of not forgiving. Ah, so you're used to forgiving and I was told it was just as unhealthy. So forgiving all the time, you got told is unhealthy. Hey, Kim. Wow. It doesn't mean you're saying it's okay that they did those things to you. You're not giving, you're not, you're not saying, by forgiving somebody, it's not saying I, I, what you did was okay. It's saying I forgive that, you could word it, like you could word it in a certain way, like, <laughs> yes, Trevor, um, she probably doesn't want to, it's her ex-husband that she's not forgiving. <laughs> so she doesn't want to talk to him, she's going through settlement and divorce, so that makes it hard. And that's her story for her to work through. So, um, yeah, so you could tell, you know, if you're writing it down and not saying it to them, you could say, what you did to me was wrong and I forgive you for your mistakes and for where you are at in your life and that you think or in the past you thought those actions were okay and I hope you grow and change to be a better person and you learn from your behaviour, you know, things like that. Um, and putting that out there but and you can write i forgive you for myself so i can let go of the hurt and the pain and move on and be happier so if you're doing it like that i don't see what 
Yeah, I don't see what would be wrong with that. You're not giving them permission to keep hurting you. Um, you send, you can send them some love and and healing rather than. So that's that's the other thing that people find really hard. If someone's really hurt you, um, sending them some healing to hope that they then to help them become a better person would help to benefit them to be a better person because and I'm just it sounds like I'm repeating myself because imagine all right just a simple smaller version someone cuts you off on the freeway when you're driving along they're driving like an idiot my ex-husband used to say things like hope you have a car crash dickhead then you'll learn your lesson for example <laughs> what energy is that putting out there you're sending them this energy more negative vibes are they gonna get any better like people might think saying something nicer like um, I hope you learn to relax more, be considerate of others and not rush everywhere and enjoy the moment. Like you could send that vibe. And you might not think it's going to do much, but imagine if everybody did that all the time and somebody upsets them like that. Their energy, you're sending them good vibrations, they're helping raise their energy. And everyone sends good thoughts to people like that. That's got to help. It does help that's what you know that's what i get shown to explain it to everybody as many people as i can so if you're sending in vibes like i hope you crash not only or hope you i don't know have anemia or something like that to freak you out whatever it is wow like you're sending them some horrible energy they're not going to get any better they're just going to be a bigger jerk and inconsiderate even more so and they might actually you know what if you <laughs> I don't know, you're not going to find out probably that they did crash or something like that. Some people have said something like that and they've seen it happen in front of them. Imagine how they'd feel after that, especially if they hurt somebody else, you know. So, um, yeah, it's just, and it's also better karma for you. It comes back. So, you know, if you're saying things like that to people, you're just attracting more of the same for yourself. If you think about it that way, if you can't do it for them, do it for you <laughs> because you'll be sending out bad vibes by thinking negative thoughts towards those people. Yes, Kerry, very well said. Forgiveness is about setting yourself free. It's actually nothing to do with that person. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to share today. You said that very well. You should, we should swap. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that insight, Kerry. That is perfect. It is for you. So you're releasing, and I'm getting goosebumps now talking about it. Um, you're releasing so much negative energy. It's just for yourself. Exactly. That's what I said at the start. You do it for you. Bugger them. Like, <laughs> if, if they're just... Wow, yeah, it was like some hurtful things were said when my second child was born from my sister-in-law. And I know she was just in a weird place and she said so mean things. And then I, we were upset and cried and, and in our hospital room and we thought it was so weird that she would come out with, like, who would say that? Um, didn't make any sense. And it took us a little while. And then eventually I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to let it go and forgive her. She hasn't apologised. Does she even understand? I didn't want to talk to her about it. It was... Apparently she had postnatal at the time, no prenatal at the time for herself. Um, I ended up getting postnatal after this child, so it was just a whole weird cycle. And I forgave her a few years later, and I always felt like she was forever trying to make up for it by being extra nice and going out of her way. So I feel like that was her way of apologizing. Who knows? But maybe it's because it didn't, she didn't start with that energy until I let go and forgave her. So. I would not be surprised if the energy shifted because of that letter that I wrote to her and burnt. It started after that. So, yeah, it just helps you get all that energy off you. Because, yeah, if you imagine, you're just walking around with the bitterness and the anger. My mum did it for... Yeah, my mum did it for her and abuser from when she was young. She wrote a letter to them. Um, and she said that helped immensely. And then she's just just not bitter anymore towards that person she doesn't think about it like that she's like what's the point like it's no there's no point it doesn't serve her walking around angry and and not trusting anybody because of that person and things like that so she let go of it and she's happier much happier if anyone's got anything they would like to share about somebody yeah exactly trevor meet that person in spirit you can tune in so that's like um with the writing letter there's that the other option of having a psychic conversation so i also recommend the psychic conversation for when you have someone you need to talk to and it's a bit difficult because the ego gets in the way and they might not listen and they might argue so say you're trying to resolve some kind of conflict or something like that so this is also not just about forgiveness but you can do it for both um psychic so conversation is very very handy and jody's watching has learned this i taught you this in the mentoring it's so effective isn't it um 
yeah, you can you can just imagine having a conversation with this person. You invite them over for a cuppa. You imagine them at your kitchen bench, for example, or wherever you want, and then you tell them everything. Get them everything off your chest. You can yell at them. You can tell them how you would like things to progress moving forward. You're not manipulating. You don't want to say things like you must do this and this is what's going to happen now. It's just getting them to understand your point of view because as you're talking to them in this imaginary conversation, which is just connecting with them on a spirit level, as Trevor suggested, um, you're sending, they're just going to be receptive and they're going to listen because the ego is not there. So they're just listening and nodding. They can even be smiling and just going along and agreeing with everything you're saying. If you're doing it in real life, they might be like, what are you talking about, blah, 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 and they argue with you. So this is what you do for any conversation. So you can also obviously do this to get everything out of your system and then forgive somebody. You don't have to see them in person. It could be from years ago. It could be from someone who's crossed over. Imagine how healing that would be to get that off your chest, which is great. Oh, there's all these comments popping up. Ashley, I feel I need to forgive myself a lot more. Yes, I lost my son four years ago. Oh, at 35 weeks. And I wanted another baby so much. My daughter was born a year and a half after he was born. And I still, to this day, feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I'm not loving her enough because I'm constantly wanting him to be here. I totally get that. Ashley, um, my my mum had a stillborn when I was 12 and um, that would have been my little sister. I've got three brothers. And she was due Christmas Eve and was born in August. So that's how early she was. And back then, that was years ago. Back then, you know, babies can get saved much. Um, the odds are much better for them now because of technology. But back then, no. And um, that Christmas Eve, my mum found out she was pregnant. So we found out she was pregnant when she was originally meant to have the first baby and then that was the interesting cycle and then she he ended up being born the day before she was born and passed it was like it's really cool cycle he was actually due a couple of weeks later but mum asked to be induced because to help cope with the first anniversary of her passing she wanted to be holding a baby in her arms and know that he was okay rather than worrying so they let her be induced two weeks early on compassion. That was hard, so I totally understand that. And mum, I was obviously still grieving for that, for her and she's probably about 25. She would have been 25 now, that was a long time ago. So um, what I want to say to you, Ashley, as, as soon as you said that, and you can take this or leave this, this might be hard to hear, or it might be exactly what you need to hear. So, um, I'm just going to share it, okay, because I told you my story because I feel like they'll help you understand that I get you and I'm getting told to tell you this. Um, ch children, the souls don't enter the body when they're pregnant. Um, they pop in and out and visit, right? And they, we, have a, we choose our reasons for being here. So we have different lessons and we might want to be a particular sex. We might want to be born on a certain day because of numerology, star signs, whatever to do with our lessons. So this soul who entered um, your son decided to tap out at that time because even though you made the physical body with your partner and grew the baby, they decided that body wasn't for them. So this is the shocker, Ashley. It's the same soul and I'm going to cry. It's the same souls come back. You haven't missed out on him because it's the same soul. They just came back later when they were ready. They weren't quite ready yet. You haven't lost anybody. That's actually hard for me to say because I don't know how you're going to take it. Um, and I really hope that you resonate with that and you take it in and just think about it for a moment. You might have, You would have named him and everything, but... <laughs> the soul, which is not a particular sex, wants you to know that they came back later when they were ready. Because that's the body that they chose and they weren't quite ready at the time. And and it's actually, you said your daughter, so they've changed the yeah, sex and everything. A year and a half and needed to be that. It's to do with the numerology number. Um, yeah, it's so beautiful and I'm trying to hold it all in for you. I'm feeling all your vibes right now. Yep. Yeah. 
<laughs> hmm. Anyway, <laughs> um, I hope, really hope that helped. Awesome. And yeah, so, and that's how it happens sometimes. It does not happen with every baby. Sometimes they stick around you to be um, like a spirit guide or something for you. They stick around you and they might come later. They could come as a grandchild. My si so talking back to my sister, who didn't come here at the time, Years later, when I became spiritual and, and learned how to do all this stuff, I was getting a third eye candling, and my uncle came through who crossed over, and I asked him some questions and stuff. Anyway, long story short, he came. I said, "So what about my sister's name was Danielle?" I said, "What about Danielle? Is she back?" And he said, "Yeah, Bridie, and Bridie's my second daughter." So my sister, who didn't make it that time, didn't come back as my brother straight away. That cycle, a year later, she came back as my own daughter. Years later. So she, so she's um, back here too. Actually, my daughter, that daughter in particular, is thirteen, and I told her that not long ago. So she um, thinks that's very cool and th thinks she's a favourite now because she's my sister and my daughter. <laughs> so she, she jokes about that all the time. Um, yeah, and I told my parents at the time when that happened to explain it to them, and that was very healing and helpful for them to know that too. They appreciate it. So I hope that helped, lovely lady. Um, Uh, oh, I'm so glad that makes me, I'm just reading your comment. You've been trying to connect with him for a long time. I'm reading this because this is a different page and not everyone will see this comment. But it's so hard when you never even heard him cry or open their eyes. Yes, honey, I totally understand. And then my daughter will interrupt me all the time and I'm trying to do it. <laughs> That's gorgeous. She's telling you, ah, you're making me cry. <laughs> That's beautiful. Of course, that's just, yeah. I love that you shared that, and obviously that's the reason why you jumped on today, so I could deliver that message for you. That is so cool. <laughs> it doesn't mean she replaced him or anything either. Like, it, it's just, I wanted to be a female, maybe, and that body you made was it. I don't know, it could, that could be the reason without going into it too much more. I could probably get into more detail for you in a proper reading if you wanted to know, but it, it really doesn't matter. It's more about just that healing energy for you now to experience that. So that's your reading. Goodness me. <laughs> that's so cool. And then scroll back and check out some of the other comments. So <laughs> we made everyone emotional. That's great. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. That was beautiful. So that's forgiving yourself for not like, and it's okay that you didn't deal that well. You could have been grieving and really wanting a son because of that experience. And then feeling that lot so you can forgive yourself for that and forgive yourself for not knowing how this works that's a beautiful way to forgive just releasing you know how can you people berate themselves for not understanding how things happen and work like there's no need you didn't know and now you know <laughs> it's just really beautiful um yeah so forgiving yourself for things like Sometimes when I talk to people, they, um, you know, how sometimes we might say, if you could turn back time and change the past or something, what would you do differently? I'm someone who definitely says nothing because everything led me up to where I am today. And I don't know what kind of person I would be if I changed anything. And I definitely made some mistakes and I've hurt people and I've, and I've stayed in relationships longer than I should have. And there's so many things that I could go back and change, but instead I'm forgiving myself. I've forgiven myself. Goodness me, I did a, in that circle from last night, a beautiful friend of mine, Adriana, she did a beautiful release because it was winter solstice and she helped us with, a, with these beautiful activation sprays. Called, this one was called Sweet Surrender and it was about forgiving and letting love in. And it was so good. But it must be why forgiveness came up because we were releasing lots of things and one of mine was forgiving myself and other people for things. So that was just beautiful. So, um, yeah. Forgiving yourself for what you think you did wrong or mistakes you made is huge as well because it doesn't always have to be about other people. It's your own thoughts and your own lack of knowledge or, yeah, it's so many things. So many comments. Thank you so much for interacting, guys. This is really beautiful. I um, really appreciate you sharing. Nicole. Oh, wow. I was physically, verbally and emotionally abused for 17 years by my ex. I don't even need to forgive him. 
I feel nothing negative towards him. Wow, that's amazing. I send him love daily. That is such a massively amazing attitude. I left him because if I stayed, he would have killed me and my kids. Wow, Nicole. So this is like connects onto the past life stuff. And I really appreciate your share and vulnerability. And I'm sure everyone else listening does too. <laughs> Being shown. Okay, so when that's happened to you before in another life, except it went too far. And so this time, when you came back and experienced it again, and it sucks, I know you would think, why would I choose to go through that again? But this time, your attitude is different. You're a, you're a very different person to last time, and you got away, and you're the kind of person that sends him love. Like, that's massive. In the life I'm being shown, for, you didn't last as long in the marriage, but you did die at their hand it's not the same person it's a different person you did die at their hand and so you chose to come back as a lesson to figure out your self-worth and to get out and make the right decisions although what i'm being shown is it was still too long <laughs> but you did it for the kids as well as yourself so then you can decide when you cross over again if you need to do it in a shorter time or um no, actually, no, you don't actually. They're just showing me no because of the attitude you have towards sending love and forgiveness for yourself. You've you've exceeded your expect your own expectations of how you um, learnt your lessons in this life, which is fantastic. So you do not have to do that again, which is amazing. Phew, I'm glad because I was just tapping into thinking, oh God, I hope you don't have to do that again and get out sooner. It's all good. You've accelerated by that attitude you have. And that's how you get done with all your lives quicker, people. <laughs> hey, Laura Lou. That's definitely how you get done faster. I love it. That's great. Well done. Um, oh, Laura. Lost twins and a baby I had after them. I'm sure he may be one of the twins that came back. Funny if I'm right. Yes, Laura. Um, so the twins, with the twins aspect, there might have only been one soul at the time and not another one ready to come. And then one didn't want to be born without the twin because the souls weren't entering the body yet. So I know this topic is a little bit off topic to forgiveness because we're talking about babies and stuff. So you want me to tune in, Laura, to see if that is the same soul also? Yeah, okay, what, what I'm definitely being shown is the twins have passed. It wasn't two souls, it was still just one soul. So that maybe, yeah, that that is why. All right, so what I'm also being shown is there wasn't a soul even ready then. Okay, that sounds weird. There was not, you physically made the babies, but there wasn't a soul ready at all hovering around, ready to enter. That sounds weird, <laughs> but that's why they didn't make it because there wasn't a soul ready to have you two as parents. So they didn't come. So the soul that came through, um, with the baby that you had was just like that's the new soul that decided to come and that soul I'm being shown this is only the third human life so they're pretty new so if this child of yours Laura has um, a bit of a harder time with people or if they have um, if they get diagnosed with ADD or something like that because that means they're really really spiritual and they get lots and lots of messages or they had a hard time settling in or not good with loud noises or better with animals you know that kind of energy it could be because they're new it might they might not have any of this stuff um but if that happens that could be why sometimes it happens with souls that have been here only one or two times and this soul is new to earth as i say they might have had plenty of lives um in other places in different dimensions and other planets and now i'm getting really woo woo for you um, but yeah, this soul is quite new to earth and it may it may get along with animals better than people So just giving you a heads up. I don't know how old they are now. So <laughs> How cool. All right, we we're, were talking about some really big stuff. Um, I'm got my cards here <sighs> Laura, oh, that's beautiful it Took you a long time to forgive yourself for that. It's such a great topic and I'm so of course we got given the topic That's definitely needed today there's it's hard because anyone can look at that comment and say, why would you have to forgive yourself for anything to do with losing 
he is with me now he's 13 years old awesome so how like is he is he great with people is he sociable is it, it the fact that you can tell him that he's only been here three times that's pretty cool he's been in other dimensions and stuff way more or he's been animals um, and things but as a human this is only his third time on earth which is really cool and i haven't met as many younger souls as i have older so that's pretty cool um yeah how does he um get along with like he's got lots of friends or is he a bit keeps to himself like yeah i'd love to know but yeah if that is correct but um if he is 30 he might be okay with it all now but if he's really great with animals then that's cool i'm like glad you love the discussion we're getting a bit big but that's okay it's whatever comes through is what's needed today so that's just how it works um you love a card and my guidance awesome so what we need you to do guys are you asking for cards i need you to ask a specific question because i want to get to as many of you as possible in about 20 minutes so it <laughs> could carry um so don't just say it's about love life or career what do you exactly what do you want to know exactly just tell me the question i'll reword it if i need to so keep watching because i might have to ask you to elaborate on something because that way the more specific the question the more specific your answer will be instead of me just giving you some fluffy stuff right right beautiful jody's given an example of a specific question because she knows how this works um uh can i please have a card around the energy of the physical pain i'm feeling and what i can do to manage it and she's even worded it right with energy because these are energy oracle cards um you know how it works jodes love it all right so that's an example so around the energy of physical pain i'm feeling and what i can do to manage it so what is going on with yeah what like why the energy around the physical pain so like why you're getting the pain exam for example and what you can do so we'll do two cards this will give you a bit of a gist of how to oh beautiful laura okay what's going on why are you getting physical pain and what can you do to manage it so we'll do two cards So physical pain is usually due to something energetically or spiritually or something to do with your chakras happening around you. And I'm assuming because of the card that came out for your physical pain, is it to do with your stomach area because I've got the solar plexus. And if it's not physically in your stomach, it's to do with the I am chakra of who I am as a person, what's going on with my life. Um, and digestion yeah so it's it's that area it's joy as well lacking joy so um yeah give me a heads up jody if it's physically in that area because that chakra came out i'm guessing unless it's just to do with lack of joy or um having a bit of a collision in your mind and things about what you're doing with your life who you are if you if you have if you're a little bit stuck not resonating with your journey so that's the energy around it. That's the part that part of the question. Hopefully you're typing furiously to let me know. <laughs> I don't need it for me, I just want to make sure it makes sense to you. Oh, there's other other comments coming up we've got to catch up on. But I'm waiting for Jody. <laughs> um, so then how can you manage it um, and to improve it or sort it out? Um, we've got the appreciation card, Jody. Oh, it is in that area. Thank you, Jody, for confirming that for me. Okay, beautiful. Good. Of course it is. <laughs> um, how to manage it and improve it. Got the appreciation card. That's a bit tricky. If you're in pain about something, you're like, what am I supposed to appreciate about that? Appreciate the fact that there's a confirmation in there for you that there's something going on with your identity about who you are and helping you recognize that you need to bring more joy into your life and have more fun and do some more silly things so that's what you're learning to appreciate appreciating the signs um, because she's surrounded by these bramble bushes and as she's focusing on this one rose more flowers are appearing 
So when you focus on, so instead of the physical pain, if you focus on the good things in your life and what's amazing and what is working with your body and what you love about your body, instead of focusing on the pain, you will have more things to appreciate and more things to be grateful for. Pleasure, gorgeous. Okay. Now, I'm going to take turns swapping from page to page because we've got two pages going. Chandra, you're told you have an angel with you. Can you tell me more about her or spiritual guidance for my path, please? Awesome. Does it not feel like a female energy? Actually, angels are unisex. It's just how people portray them. Yeah, all right, let's have a look. I'm just going to tune in to see, Chandra, who you're... Yeah who your angel is, who's with you. Everybody has angels and guides and, and spirits and stuff around them. Just filtering. I'm seeing a line of them. So it's like, does one want to step forward to let me know that they're your main angel that's working with you? All right. Interestingly, you have uh it's like an ascender master that's stepping up not an angel there's angels there but the ascender master that stepped forward his name is now i don't know if this is right it's what's popped in my head and i'm not great with names commander ishtar commander ishtar like i-s-h-t-a-r maybe so you can write that down um yeah They've stepped forward to let you know that they're there. So let's have a look. I have a deck that has Ascender Masters. I think he might even be in there. It's not someone I've worked with before much. Like I know who they are, but I haven't specifically gone and... Name is right. Oh, good. Of course. Awesome. Um, yeah, thank you, Nicole. Yeah, I'm seeing them with blonde hair. Not that they really have a little physical, but yeah, that's just how I'm seeing. Very shiny, very high up. All right, just going to see what they're helping. I'm going to pull a card for you, Chandra. They're actually a male, but it doesn't matter. Everyone's all, all guides and um, angels have a very balanced masculine and feminine energy. So if you feel they're more female, that's fine. They're, it's just we're presented as a male, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It's nothing to do with it. A very masculine, as in powerful, strong energy. That's, yeah. That's probably why they present this presented as male. So Commander Ishtar. And you might have angels as well. Um, it's just that this is who stepped forward when I just asked. There's in like the most important one that wants you to know they're here. So you can go look them up, have a photo of them on your phone, understand and learn and read about the why they're helping you. Now you know him. Awesome, Nicole. Um, so I just want to see one card to do with why they're helping you at the moment, Chandra. Why is Commander Ishtar helping Chandra? Oh, this card. <laughs> it's just with your connection to spirit. Door to spirit. Fantastic. Just helping you with your spiritual growth. So that's really cool. I love that. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, let's go scrolling. I'm just going to draw. I'm not doing any order. I'm just whoever jumps out at me. Oh, Kerry, I love that. Okay. <laughs> um, right, so it's about lack of connection to your body and you've been feeling ill and you're wondering if it's to do with that. So, um, all right. Never feeling connected to your body. You need this full steps like, yeah, you didn't want to come out, didn't want to be here. So it's funny, we choose, we, we, choose and we volunteer to come to Earth because we want to help with humanity and we want to learn our lessons and then like you're in the body and you're like ew why would i want to be in this restrictive body i don't want to come out it's cold <laughs> you're being stubborn and so you felt a disconnect from your body so maybe you're quite a new soul too so i'll just have a look because that means working on grounding and just being grateful for the physical body you have that you chose to come here in and learn all the lessons and feel things and experience food and and making love and smelling things and it's all very different here in a physical body than it is out there you're way more free when you're in spirit it's just a whole different experience um so 
connecting with that body and just understanding that you're a soul who chose a body like a costume to put on and that's the one you picked and we're all in a big play playing different roles and learning different things so let's have a look Kerry at what this I'm asking how they're telling me to ask it is what do you what's the energy around you in your physical body first of all and the second card will be um Hmm, well, there's something to lesson. So what's the energy around you in your physical body? And then what's the lesson for you to help you with that? So it's like a, like a step, like a action to take. All right. And it might help answer the question about why you've been feeling physically sick. energy around you in the physical body and what's the action you need to take to help you to connect to it better yeah it feels like a an imbalance like a vertigo which is making you feel nauseous like yeah like seasick kind of thing okay Whoop. <laughs> perfect cards it's just amazing all right all right I always get surprised. I don't know why. I've been doing this for years and I still be like, I'm always still amazed and so appreciative of the accuracy of the cards. Because um, <laughs> when you shuffle, you stop when you're guided and then you split the deck exactly where they guide you to. Even if you drop some or whatever, as you do it or you think, oh, was I supposed to pick up that card? Whatever you do is right because that's what the universe wanted you to do. That's just it. Um, so the first card I was asking Kerry about, the energy of around you, um, feeling like you're disconnected from your body. <laughs> this card, attachment. It's like feeling stuck, heavy. So you just like change to a post. And there's this mask having to, feeling like you're putting this mask on, like, who, like not being yourself completely. So you feel, and I just mentioned how the, the analogy I gave was that you feel like, like we're in a costume on a stage. This is all a big play. And that's the energy. This is a confirmation for you that that's how you've been feeling like. Like this weird, it's attachment to the body, but then like the way she's looking up and I never really noticed, I know she's looking at the mask, but I'm really feeling like she's looking up to like, what the heck? <laughs> why, why am I here? Why are you doing this to me? But it wasn't, it was your choice. So there's a bit of forgiveness in the theme of the today. I just got shown us to forgive yourself for choosing to come here at um, this time. Well, wow, sorry, distracted. Nicole just said Ishtar is a goddess of love. So that was a female energy, which is amazing because the deck I have, that's a very masculine male energy. So that's what I mean by balance and how people portray things. So, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so that's a confirmation for you, Carrie, about that. And then I asked what you need to do to help you connect with that body more. And it was about meditation and rejuvenation. So learning to really ground yourself and focus um, and connect with your body. So meditate, don't do, yeah, to help with this, don't do meditations where they take you off out of your body and you go because then you'll be like, you just like, you just want to leave your body all the time. You want to do a meditation that's more shamanic, more grounding, more anything to do with Gaia and the base chakra and reds and browns and blacks. So just grounding yourself and feeling into your body and loving it because then you won't have physical pain. They're showing me pains in your body because you just want to be out of it. And to learn to love and appreciate the journey that you're on and then be more grateful and more amazing things will happen to you you'll be less you have no pain you'll feel healthier you just yeah just just be in it just be here and love it it needs some nurturing and love imagine how your poor body's feeling if you're not if you're hating it on it for being in it you know it's not going to treat you very nicely in return it's going to re reject you <sighs> beautiful Oh, Laura, goodness me. I'm shaking trying to message you. My oldest son sounds a lot like you explained. He is 18 but finds it hard to relax and be around people. There you go. He might be a newbie too or he just might be really, really tuned in. If you type it up with your permission, I can pull a card on for him to help what he, see what he needs. Oh, Christy Lee. Will I own my house in the near future? And I'll swap back to the other... 
All right, so instead of will I, because that's a yes or no question, um, I will ask what steps do you need to take to bring in, for you to be able to build your house? So I'll do step one, step two, outcome. Because it's not just an answer of yes or no, it's like that's magical thinking of it'll just happen. It's like, okay, what do I need to do to make this happen? What can I bring to the table? What do you need to release some thought patterns? Do you need to be better at manifesting? Do you need to um, let go of outcome? You know, what are your steps you need to take? So let's have a look at what they are to help you take control of this. Because you can make this happen. It's up to you. If you want to build your house, it's you're in control of how that manifests into reality. It's not just dumb luck. Like, yeah. So let's see. What you need to do, Christy Lee. Whoop! Dropping cards. Alright. What steps do you need to take to help manifest you owning your own house in the future? Near future. Awesome. <laughs> Dropping cards. One. <laughs> Two. Outcome. Awesome. Okay. So the outcome is beautiful because it's the temple path card, which means you're on the right track and it's your journey and that's what's meant to happen, which is great. First card, we got the rest of your rejuvenation card again. So it's like, chill out, <laughs> which is annoying, annoying step to get given for manifesting and we'll figure out how to bring in the house. But it's about focusing. What, oh, okay. What they just showed me is doing a, um, I get like a chunk of information at once and then they touch, so I know what to say. It's quite cool. Um, when you manifest what you want, instead of just doing a vision board, it's quite fluffy. You want to intensify that whole thing. You want to visualize, do a meditation and see exactly what it is you're manifesting. Bring it into the present, like you actually have it now. Visualize it. You're in there. You're in, imagine how your house would look. You're sitting at your dining table or on your favorite couch and you can see the room around you and it's all yours and you're decorating it and you're having fun picking the colors or whatever it is if you're designing your own or feel it and if you really do this properly you'll cry because you're just so grateful and you feel like you're in it now and you have it now so that's how you that's like a really focused meditation and do that regularly because then it brings it into the present instead of it always being in the future and then it's also showing me um, because if you always say I'll be happy when I'm finally in my own house then it's always in the future and then you're not happy now which means you're attracting more reasons to not be happy so if you just focus on the gratitude which is a bit of a theme today and what you're really grateful for and what's amazing now you'll attract these things that you want faster um, the second step was it's a thinking woman that's just you um, it's the attitude is sort of like just um, Plan. It's, a, it's a similar kind of thing. It's like planning about planning what you want, um, getting organized, making a business plan, savings, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's like getting your ducks in a row and taking the right steps, like following your intuition of where what you need to do. It's like, okay, if you want to own your own house, what steps are you taking to make it happen? Um, and how badly do you want it? And are you doing the visualization? So it's all this, like just really making it happen. It's not just sitting there wishing for it. Um, there's a lot more action steps to take and that's beautiful. Um, and it seems like that's the right path. You're supposed to own your own house and that's that's the card. So it's a great confirmation that's coming, but you need to do the work along the way. So good luck with that, lovely. All right, over this page. Awesome, okay. <laughs> loving the tags it's not crazy all these signs it's magical <laughs> I command each is a palladian awesome all right we've got Laura Lou's asking what you need to focus on well I oh, will see we'll just do one card then to see what you need to focus on at the moment and see what comes up and then that might help you understand What do you need to focus on at the moment? It's kind of a general question, but it can be answered in this deck. What do you need to focus on, Laura Lou? Just bringing your energy in here, waiting for it to tell me to stop shuffling. Uh, 
<laughs> We're ready. <laughs> what does Laura Lou need to focus on? Balance. <laughs> Yin yang. Love that. And I've just got drawn to the numbers at the top. Is that a number for you? Twos, 22, 222? Or that actually feels like it's to do with union. So balance within a couple. One strength is another one's weakness and vice versa, all that stuff. Masculine, feminine energy, yin yang, that kind of balance. Rather than work and play balance. Yeah, it's more the polarity. So the light and the dark. Um, the sun and the moon is what I'm seeing and I've never actually noticed that the yin yang looks like a sun and moon so the moon pattern and the sun so yeah that's what it's telling you to focus on balance of your masculine feminine energies your light and dark yeah feels really good that's for you lovely all right how long have we got a couple more awesome Okay, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, I love it. Ah, oh, thank you, Laura. Flattery gets you everywhere. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so for your, I think you said it was your son who was 18. He is 18, yep. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna tune into your son and see what's going on with him to do with feeling a bit disconnected from people. I'll just look at the energy around him as a person right now. And was well, an adult, he's 18. Um, and then what's coming up for him? No, the energy around as a person. And just some advice for him. So you can tell him if he's open to hearing, I'm sure it would be. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what they're telling me. Two cards, energy around your son as a person. And what's coming up like what what's some advice for him to help him with life at the moment all right awesome so energy around your sun <sighs> so many goosebumps he's like he's really switched on to this stuff if he's not already open about oh i'm feeling like alien vibes like he's into all that stuff if he's not or he hasn't told you or something or yeah anyway i've like his his energy his higher self has just come into the room ready to help me with this reading he's like yes tell me tell me which is weird because that's their higher self and potential so even if they're not interested in all that stuff their higher self is and they know what they need so this is like comes in and like let's let's like tell me all everything i need to know i'm ready awesome <laughs> So the energy around him, he's very much influenced. We've got the thinking woman card again. So the energy around him at the moment is that of his, his um, yeah, he's very influenced by a woman who's knowledgeable, knows her stuff, um, organized. So whether that's yourself or he's got a girlfriend or he's got a female role model or teacher. Ah, okay. Well, it's not influenced by you then if you're not getting on. <laughs> Yeah, he finds it hard to talk about spirit, but I know he knows information. Yeah, I feel like he's quite connected spiritually to the aliens and, and like he's interested in UFOs and things like that. That's what I'm getting. And if he's not, he should be. <laughs> um, yeah, he's very much, yeah, so that, that's the energy around him at the moment. So this influence, I'm not getting that it's negative. But he might be listening to someone on YouTube or a podcast or um, he's just really drawn. Maybe he's really taken it. Maybe he's got a big crush or something. Like he's just very... It's this card, like the thinking woman. So someone who knows her stuff, knowledgeable, like a teacher um, of some kind, that kind of thing. So that's just energy around him at the moment, is this woman of some kind. So that's what's going on with him. 
Maybe it's distracted. I don't know. <laughs> she might be just beautiful. He might just be infatuated. Um, the the advice for him at the moment is well, Archangel Michael came through the base chakra. So his advice is to ground himself, and that's exactly what I was saying before about when it's someone who hasn't been here that many times it's they're very much connected and up here so learning to ground yourself some shamanic energy um releasing things that they don't need spending time outside in nature um releasing any pent-up emotions and just connecting with the earth and gaia touching a tree talking to it it might sound a bit weird if you tell them to go talk to trees um yeah definitely getting in nature if you're gonna bare feet on the grass it's very cold in winter here i don't think you'd want to do it now but just releasing and grounding and because it helps you feel safe and protected being grounded and that's what archangel michael is he's there for protection he's the angel that you can call on to put his army of angels at all your doors and windows protect your house he's the one you call on to help someone when they're traveling to say can you please go make sure they're safe so he helps you feel safe and protects you his best friend is female so it could be her like he's like instead of finding his own voice um he's really like more listening to her and learning and growing so it could be something like that 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 great connection that they have um yeah so that's his advice is to ground and and learn about that base chakra shaman shamanic energy maybe um spirit animals and things like that that's what i'm getting for him that will help him anyway just to be more balanced and connected awesome all right we've got time for one more i'm sorry i don't get to everybody All right, awesome. Diane Morgan. Is this creative project I'm working on the right path for me at this time? Cool, all right, let's have a look. So what does the universe, it's a yes or no question, so I've got to word it differently. Show me the energy around this creative project you're working on. Oh, and then I'll do another card for your advice. So you know if there's something you need to do. Cool, cool. <laughs> I'll just pretend you're agreeing, because you are. <laughs> Perfect question. What's the energy around this creative project you are doing, Diane? And then some advice for you to do with that moving forward. All right. Feels like it costs money. Like it feels like an expensive creative project or something you've had to invest in. Because I'm seeing a card about the financial like struggle. So that's coming before I've pulled one. So I'm just wondering if that's got anything to do with the energy around it. If you're wondering if this investment is a good idea or if you're going to get money back for it or if you can afford it, that kind of thing. It's just something to do with finances around it. So yeah, just, just sharing that because it popped in in case it doesn't come up as a card. But yeah, let's see. energy around the creative project and what's come some advice cheapers well this creative project isn't just about cutting and pasting and making some pretty pictures or something because <laughs> the energy around hi Stephen thank you for popping in and saying hello miss you <laughs> um yeah the energy around the creative project you're doing is like divinely guided you have those lights represent spirit guides you're on the right path going exactly the right way doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing so that's the energy around it so that's like yes do that do that awesome now i asked for also some advice to do with that and you got healer of the ages which is just you understanding your own power and knowing you can create anything you don't even need someone to teach you what to do you're on the right path like it's just the best confirmation ever that you're doing the right thing and you just need to keep checking in with yourself and tapping into source for guidance because you can access the information at any time it's perfect like spot on you've followed your intuition well done now i'm hearing applause in my ears like not in my physical ears but in my head for you they're like yes she's followed she's listened she's done it like very proud of you it's like yeah couldn't get a better confirmation if we tried that was great awesome thank you so much guys i really really enjoyed look at that right on time um, I really enjoyed tuning in with you guys today. So the theme around forgiveness, um, I would love for you all to do some homework. You came here for a reason today and I 
man, there were some big conversations and some beautiful shifts and realizations. And I really love doing what I do. Um, I'm really grateful to help you guys with some advice and some spiritual spiritual growth information. You don't all have to grow up, like decide to be psychics or anything. It's just to help you making decisions, learning about yourself, loving yourself, forgiving yourself. So if you can, as a homework, if you can think of somebody would be beneficial for you to forgive for your own sake and your own healing, write them a letter, say it out loud. It doesn't have to be to them, just do it for yourself or forgiving yourself. Go look in a mirror and forgive yourself. If you don't even know what to forgive yourself for, just say, I oh, forgive myself for anything I'm holding on to. It will just help you release. You can make it beautiful and, and light a candle and make it a bit of a ritual. Nurture yourself, give yourself a treat after you've done it um, as a beautiful reward and confirmation that you've done the right thing. So thank you so much everyone for tuning in. I love you, I appreciate you and go check out my Facebook page if you haven't already. I would appreciate that. Bye.